when the pursuit is I want to lose the most fat as possible. I want to build as much muscle as possible. If either one of those two is your main goal, then the mindset should be doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. It's not being lazy. No, it's not you a lazy. Know, it's, being it's, smart. it's systematic and disciplined. No. And that's the thing. It's you got to look at the plan and stick with the plan. I want to make the case that you're going to get more than just relatively fit. I think the steps that you're about to give right now will get most people very healthy and fit. We're also it. working on behaviors. That's right. Here. And, and I, I think this... Even if you did the first five steps, this in combination with the first first five steps. Where you want to end up? Oh, this is beautiful. Hey, what's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode. Maps hit high intensity interval training, but done the right way. This is the only hit program I'm aware of that doesn't make you lose a bunch of muscle and uh, just you know move in place, burn a bunch of calories. This is actually good programming. We're gonna give it away for free. Okay, here's how you can win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. Uh, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll go through, right? We'll pick the best one. If it's you, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to Maps Hit. One more thing. We got a sale this month in June. The Shredded Summer Bundle. This is a bunch of Maps workout programs. So you got Maps Aesthetic, Maps Hit, Maps Prime, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. That bundle is already discounted. We're going to take an additional 50% off right now. And then Maps Hit by itself is also 50% off. So those are the sales that we're going on this month. We won't repeat them again until next year. So if you want to take advantage, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code uh, June50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. One of the most important steps when it comes to fat loss or muscle gain is figuring out how many calories your body needs every single day just to maintain. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, this can be a lot of guesswork, can be quite challenging. So We're due for an episode like this. It's been a while since we talked about uh, some of the steps. And I know you you said something before we started that I think it's important to let some people know that are listening to this right now. Um, I actually was, I, I don't know if you, the reason why you said that was uh, you read some of the questions on our qua or not, but there's a handful of people that, um, you know, feel like they, if they track, it triggers their old behaviors yes. of binging. So although we're going to lay out some steps that we would start most our clients on to get them started when it comes to tracking your calories mm -hmm. and figuring out your macros, uh, hang in till the end because I know that we'll address people that tracking is a kind of a trigger for them to binge and like how would we coach someone like that. So both how I would coach someone that has no past history of binging and you know how do we dial in the diet for whatever their goal is mm -hmm. we'll cover that first and then at the end go to like okay well, what would we do if you have right. someone who can't track right right yeah, and also i mean we've got a lot of questions too about like how to get that accurate like maintenance calories and uh there's lots of formulas out there and lots of um you know macro calculators and and uh, ways to get there. However, uh, simple always wins in the beginning. And so we'll kind of go over that in terms of like how to just get started and really figure yeah. that out. Well, it's super important to understand that um, metabolism is very complex and it it's not uh, stationary. In other words, you know, how many calories you're burning today can, can change and adapt um, within a day or two uh, just by your behaviors and your activity level, hormones, sleep, and all that stuff. So it is something that that moves and flexes. Um, and it's important to understand that because um, when you figure out your calories, it's important to understand that it can change. It can change just because you're working out a particular way or or cutting calories or, or increasing calories. There are a lot of macro calculators out there. We have one, right? We have one at mapsmacro.com. And so what you do is you go in there, you enter general activity level, body weight, um, and uh, you're, whether you're male or female, it'll spit out a number. But it's important to understand that these are all general rough estimates. Generalizations. Yeah. And there's a very, there can be a very wide variance from person to person. I mean, I've had, you know, I've had 130 pound female clients that burn more calories naturally. I'm not talking about just through activity, but just their bodies burn more calories then, you know, 220 pound uh, male clients who have gone through a process of extreme dieting and all that stuff. So it can be quite radical. So you can use these calculators as a general idea, but you'll never be able to get um, accurate that way. And there really is no machine or anything, at least that's not pragmatic, because you can go to like a university and get really complicated testing, mm -hmm. in which case you'll get a snapshot. This is what your metabolism is doing right now. Right. And, you know, which again, the value of that would be I'd have to do that every single day. So it's not very pragmatic. 
Um, so uh, nothing's going to be as accurate as what we're about to talk about. And it is a bit of a process, but if you do it and you don't suffer from the behavioral negatives that can come from tracking, it can be a very effective way of getting your body where you want. Well, I, ironically, we have a calculator and I don't use it. Mm -hmm. um, right. I, I, and the, the only time I really recommend it to somebody is if they feel absolutely clueless on to what they've ever consumed. They have no idea. They've never tracked before. I don't know if I eat 5,000 calories. I don't know if I eat 1,500 calories. It just helps calories. you organize your thoughts. Right. I have no idea where I'm at in that range because I've never tracked before. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea what I should probably start at. So I think those tools and all of them are, I would put in this, even those uh, like, you know, tests that you can go take and they kick off, you know, where your, your kind of calorie should be. Um, they're, they, they're all flawed. And, but yet if you have no direction, it's, it's better than nothing. Yeah. It's better than just blindly g guessing a number. Oh, I'm just going to do 2000. Cause that sounds like a number I should do if you have no idea, but most people have somewhat of an idea or by the time I get a hold of them as a, as a trainer or a coach, they've tried tracking or they've paid attention a little bit. And so for them, or they can, or they can relate to me. This is how I've ate in the last couple of weeks or how I normally eat. And, and then, then you I, can help them. And then I can yeah. go, okay, that's, I can estimate, okay, that's about this many calories. And then I normally will go put them at a number that I feel is pretty close to where I think they're currently at. And then monitor. And then monitor. And, and really it doesn't matter if I'm off by five or 700 calories because I'm going to adjust if I need to. It really is. Let's just agree on this is a good starting point. And that starting point, when we when I decide that I'm not looking to, even if the person's goal is to g uh, lose a bunch of weight or gain a bunch of weight, I don't initially want to do that. I initially, I'm trying to figure out where where is their metabolism at right, currently right now yeah. based off of the, their, their normal activity. Yeah, well, this is where I would see a little bit of a flaw with that. Somebody that's just going to the macro calculator is trying to figure out how much they need to lose right away that's or, right. or gain right away. And they're not putting the work in in terms of what your actual maintenance level looks like. And so I think that's like the, the perfect place to start. Usually that takes a couple of weeks to figure out. Yeah, yeah. and I do want to be clear too. Um, this is true for fitness experts too. If you look at the studies on people when they try to estimate their calories, even well-informed people, right? You take me or Adam or Justin, and we know what has proteins, we know fats, carbs, we know calories, we've worked with people for very long. And if I haven't tracked for a long time and you tell me to estimate my calories, I'm going to be off. Always. Yeah. Always. Always. Nobody is ever. Now, Nobody ever the less right. you know about calories and proteins and fats and carbs, uh, the more off you're going to be. And you would be surprised how many people are so, it's like, uh, you know, I remember at one point being like, I need to eat, you know, 40 grams of protein. And I'm like, oh, this is a chicken breast. This is probably about 40 grams of protein. And then I remember weighing that chicken breast and going, oh, that's like 70 grams of protein. Yeah. That's way more than I thought. Uh, that it was, and I, I supposedly, you know, know what I'm talking about. So, well, they've done research on this, right? Yeah, just, uh, oh, it's clear. People that just simply tracking, not even trying to change macros or do anything, just by simply tracking the amount of people that lose weight <coughs> just from becoming aware. Well, how much? Uh, and you always bring this up, like even just on the back of labels of food, like how much they're off in oh, terms yeah. of serving size or whatever they're what is it, promoting. 10, 10 to twenty percent, twenty five percent, yeah, up to twenty five percent that can be off. So I north mean, or you south, gotta, you got to factor that in too. By so. the way, and that's measured packaged food. You go to the you go to a restaurant, yeah. That that you know, oh, I'm going to get that chicken bowl. Oh, it's got five hundred and forty six calories. The kid who scooped the chicken or the rice in there today, it, it's going to be off 20% versus the kid that did it before. Yeah, yeah. Or you get heavy handed Harry, dude. Let's, yeah. let's go. Or you go buy some fruit. Like, you know, back in the day, we didn't have these great apps that you could enter food in and whatever. And before people even weighed, I would say, oh, medium banana, this many calories. And then I remember one time I was like, let me weigh this banana to yeah. see if it's an actually medium. It's a super jumbo banana. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, this is way off from what I thought. So um, Let, let's get the, let's get make sure there's clarity on that, Doug. I believe it's 25. percent I want to be uh, I want to be accurate on on that. I'm pretty sure that's what the FDA allows uh, food labels to be off. But if you, to your point, Sal, about eating out, if you factor in that the FDA allows you 25 20 to 25 percent room north or south on it, and then you add in human error. 
Yeah. Because that, yeah. so, so when you go to a restaurant and they have to label the calories, you know, let's just say like it's 20%. Uh, so it's 20%, right? So you, yeah, you know, a high. this burrito That's bowl. 400 calories. If it's a 2,000 calorie diet, that could be 400 calories. Well, okay. So this burrito bowl has this, this, it has one cup of rice, six ounces of this, whatever, and it has to be this many calories. FDA says that they have to be within 20% of that. The problem is then you have somebody who is serving it who potentially can go over by 10 or 15% on the rice or over yeah. on the meat or whatever sauces or guacamole or whatever else you're doing. And that doesn't, that's not held accountable the same way that the recipe is. No. So you could literally be off by 30 to 50% very easily by the, the, the room that the FDA allows with the labels. And then in addition to that, the heavy hand that a lot of these servers will do because they want you to be satisfied and happy with your or serving. If they add a little extra oil. Yeah. Or, you know, so like that. man, that, that, and that's what makes eating out so difficult when you're trying to do it. So part of, and I don't even think we actually listed this uh, in our steps, uh, but I think this is another good point since we brought this up. When I'm asking a client to let's figure your metabolism out, let's track. This is the time when I'm asking if I could ever get you to be as disciplined as possible to make your food yourself, this is the time. Because we're trying to get as accurate a number That's as possible. right. We're trying to be really accurate. And if you are eating at, which that doesn't mean you can't eat out in the future. I will, we'll figure out how to adjust for that. It doesn't mean I'm asking you forever you can't eat out. But for this next week to two weeks that we're going to be tracking to figure out where your current metabolism is at right now, uh, you limiting how much you're eating out does it does a wonder for me as far as trying to get yeah. precise on where your yeah. metabolism or is. Or at the very least, uh, or to put it differently, I would say, so step one is what you're talking about, which is track calories and macros for two weeks. And what you don't want to do is change your diet or change your activity. We want to see where yeah. you're normally at. Now, to what Adam's saying, if you eat the same thing every day and you're tracking it, what I would have a client do is then weigh that. Okay, so they're saying, I'm eating this, I'm eating that. Well, can you weigh that for me so I know exactly how many calories you're taking in? And the the goal of this is not to live like this, by the way. We don't I don't think it's uh I don't think it's reasonable to ask somebody to track uh food for the rest of their lives. In I fact, also don't think it's unreasonable to ask someone to do that for only two weeks that's the to point. learn. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just want to know. We just want to know right now what a good starting point is and get as accurate as possible. And this is one of the best ways to do it. And so what you do is for two weeks. Everything that goes in your mouth, you weigh it and you track it and you know, that way we know. And, and there's apps that are amazing for this now. Mm -hmm. Fat secret, very easy to use. Enter the food in. Once you weigh it, you could plug it in. It does all the calculations for it. I mean, we used to have to do this out of a book. I remember yeah, that. By hand. Have, <laughs> yeah. What was that called? The Calorie King. King. Yeah. yeah. There's a book and then it became a website, but yeah, we didn't have uh, this, this crazy resource. Yeah. So, and, and, and you want to keep your diet like it's been, because I don't want to see how, you know, how you can change it in two weeks. That's such a good point, Sal. Like that's, and I always have to reiterate that to a client when I'm explaining to them is like, I know you've got your coach or your trainer sitting across the table from you telling you we're going to start tracking, pay attention. But what I don't want you to do is to try and impress me this week, I want you to be consistent. I want yeah. you to do what you normally do, yes. so I can this get. This isn't it out. your Instagram food. Yeah, this no, this is, is not. This food. is not trying to impress Coach because he's paying attention. If you every day eat a Snickers bar at noon, I actually want you to do that. Yeah, right I need now. to see what your what yeah, your body is burning. I want to be able to track everything and go like, okay, this is what they. This is a normal diet because it's going to tell me not just where your calories are. It's also going to let me know how imbalanced your macronutrients are. Yeah. Is this person not getting enough healthy fats? Are they under consuming on the protein? Are they getting enough fiber more in their diet? accurate you could be with this first step, the better. The less accurate you are with this step, the, the more it's going to be challenging for you uh, moving ahead. Yeah, and accurate means con being consistent with how you normally would That's eat, I mean. not like mm -hmm. accurate to following oh, I, the- Oh, I've had clients who were like, oh, I need to lose 40 pounds. And they'd bring me their, their tracking for the first five days and I'd look at it and be like- <laughs> yeah. Are you look like you're following a diet all of a sudden. Like yeah. for breakfast, you have like three ounces well, of chicken breast. And I'm and only egg. drinking water. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the drinks that yeah. have calories in them. Yeah, you, you got as consistent and, and uh, as you can possibly be with your normal life because we need to get or you need to get an accurate reading. Otherwise, uh, we're going to base it off of an accurate number. You know, it's like doing math. Like when you do a math problem, it's got 15 steps. If the first step is off, that's it. You're screwed. Like, and, and the more it's off, the more the whole number is going to be off. So you have to be super accurate because this first step of tracking is going to affect the rest of what we're going to do. It reminds me of this um, a foundation I was laying for the shed, and uh, uh, I had a guy helping me, and it was just off. 
It was off like maybe like a half inch on one side. That was it. Ruined everything. Like everything was wonky after that. <laughs> so it's just like, it's got to be right. This yeah. also sets the table for easy coaching steps. And what I mean by that is like when I was talking about how when you track like this, Many times what we find out is you're over consuming sugar, underdoing protein, like not, not getting enough fiber. fiber. Yeah. There's like a ton of things where you're missing. And instead of like taking you from that's how you normally eat to like, okay, here's the diet the trainer gives you. I'm actually going to look at that and go like, hey, let's just, let's improve one or two things that's here. That's it. And just focus on that. Like I'm not going to coach anywhere else from that. And and but if you, you wouldn't know where to go if it wasn't accurate. That's right. If it's inaccurate, then whatever and what everybody thinks they want is okay. I'm on my fitness routine. Okay, coach, give me the diet. I'm going to follow the diet. It's like why would we do that if you were coming from this extreme of under consuming on fiber, over consuming on sugar, under consuming on protein, not getting enough healthy fats, like there's so many little things that I can start to make tweaks that won't mm -hmm. make these radical changes in your yes. lifestyle that are so hard to follow. It's just like, oh, wow, we're that low on fiber. I'm simply going to add this, you know, spinach salad into your diet or a cup of blueberries, yeah. and I'm not going to mess with anything else. Let's just see what or that does. Another for your quarter diet. gallon of water. Yeah. Like just, yeah. so that is the idea of this is to get a really good baseline of where you're currently at. So we can make these micro adjustments that eventually lead to this huge change in your lifestyle. Yeah. So what's the key here? Patience for the first two weeks. Yep. Just track try and stay as accurate and as normal as possible this includes activity yes this also means you don't all of a sudden do a bunch more activity because you know that you're tracking be normal and patient for the next two weeks because this is going to be the base for everything that if we you do want forward. to as well like this is where we do recommend like fitbits or apple watch yes. whatever so you do just get a a, a a little bit of an idea of like how many steps per day because that does kind of it, at least you can see the trends that way yeah, no, totally. this is uh, I. It's something that I make mandatory. So I know that we talked about it as as a potential option in these steps. Um, I think it gives me so much insight. It also, again, sets the table for micro adjustments. Yep. So if I get a client and I say, "Listen, don't do any any extra activity. If you this is the day, this is what you do at work. This is when you go grocery shopping. This is the day you clean house. Keep all normal stuff the same." If you rarely go to the gym, I actually still want you to rarely go to the gym. I don't want you to all of a sudden, because we're getting ready to start our routine, to go to the gym five or seven days a week, because if you don't normally do that, you're going to throw off mm -hmm. my calculation. So I want to see a, a normal week of activity or the lack of, so then I can, and I love using steps as an easy way to kind of measure that. So then I look at a week and I go, oh, look, we only average 4,000 steps. Now I have another subtle thing that I can do to this client that will show improvement in their overall health by just telling them, okay, for this week, we're going to shoot, try and shoot for 6,000 steps a day. Yes. A basic, small, easy goal with, by the way, an extra 2,000 steps is literally you going for a walk for 20 minutes outside mm -hmm. and you'll achieve that. So it's not a big ask to get my client to start moving in the right direction. And because I know where their baseline is, I can do this little micro adjustment. Totally. Now, step two is kind of an extension of step one, and that is to track your body weight and circumference measurements or body fat percentage if you want. Because what we want to do, the goal is after two weeks, you didn't go up and you didn't go down. Okay. So everything should stay the same if you did this right. Um, now, if you didn't do this right, don't worry. If it went up or down, that'll help us get a better ass estimate of your caloric intake. So if somebody's tracking for two weeks and they're like, okay, I tracked everything, but I dropped three pounds or four pounds uh, over the last couple weeks. And I, you know, I, let's say I rule out water retention and that kind of stuff. I'll say, okay, well, you probably ate less than your body's burning within that period of time, probably a few hundred, you know, a few hundred calories less. So I'm going to readjust your maintenance by that. Or let's say you lost weight um, and lost strength and lost performance and that kind of stuff. Then I'll do the same thing and say, well, you probably under ate. And sometimes that happens, by the way, it's more often than not. That's what happens when people track. <laughs> Even if they try and stay normal, that actually, because they're aware, like Adam said, they tend to naturally eat a little less. So if I see some weight loss, which I don't want, but let's say I see that, then I'll know, okay, you, you're probably a few hundred calories above what this number is that we're tracking. Now, if you weigh yourself, if you take measurements, if you do body fat tests, it's very important that you do all of it same time of the day, mm -hmm. same food intake, same water. Same everything, because what we don't want to do is, oh, I gained four pounds, but really it's because you weighed yourself at night versus the morning, right. or I took a body fat test. Well, yeah, last time John tested me, this time it was Susan, and they both have different ways of pinching my you know, body, my, my skin full, you know, with the calipers and all that stuff. So 
You want to be as consistent as yeah. possible. If it's just weighing yourself on the scale or like doing like, I know Doug, a lot of times we'll do just like the waist measurement in the morning. It's just great because nothing interrupts that yet. Yeah. Like you haven't had any food. Like it doesn't vary at all. It's, it's always pretty much the same, uh, that you're like situation that you're going to deal with in the morning. So I always like try for that. But again, like t it, it really just has to be consistently the same time, the same exact protocol every time. Now, during this two week period, I'm actually not making any adjustments unless I see something very dramatic happen. Yeah. And I like to take the, the one week snapshot. So like I'm having them, you know, get on the scale or track circumference or whatever, maybe on a, a morning or daily basis for the for the time period. But it's you're looking at the trend. I'm right? looking at a week at a time, yeah. right? So I because you could easily, uh, especially my female clients, fluctuate you know water retention up and down totally. by uh, you know two to four pounds. And what we don't want to do is go, oh, I'm way under eating because I dropped two pounds, and then you increase yeah. your calories, and then the, when you would have leveled back out the next day. So I'm paying attention because I don't want to see anything dramatic happen like what i don't want to see is day one of deciding to do this we drop two pounds day two we drop two pounds again day three we drop two i'm making a quick adjustment at that point if mm -hmm. i see two 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 right away okay we're under eating we need to increase our calories but if i see two pounds go down one day and then you come back up one pound the next yeah. day and then like we're probably in a pretty close area i'm going to pay attention yeah. to i would say depending on the individual at the end of the two-week period the buffer that i tend to give people is about three or four pounds yeah above that or below you know then i start to say, okay, the calories that you were tracking were off from what you normally, like I remember once I had a client who had a lot of weight to lose. He had 80 pounds to lose. We did this and I said the same thing I just said now. I said, you know, make sure you're accurate. Don't change anything. Everything's the same. At the end of 10, at the end of two weeks, he lost eight pounds. And I know what happened is that just because he's aware, instead of eating five cookies, he ate three cookies or whatever. Instead yeah. of eating, you know, you know, 10 ounces of meat, he ate, you know, seven ounces or whatever. So I said, okay, uh, I know you You said you were accurate, but it looks like you were actually below what your maintenance is. So I know we have a little bit room to go up. So that's why this is very important. But if you do this right, you should have no change. That's the goal. The goal is at two weeks, I see no, no change. And the things I always have to make clear to my client is that just because we don't see a movement on the scale doesn't mean we're not already seeing progress. So especially if they start working. Yeah. Hard, so you come to me, you want to lose 30 pounds. I tell you, okay, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be tracking, figuring all this out. I actually don't want to see anything go on the scale right away. They get discouraged right away. They think like, oh, you mean to tell me I'm going to be doing stuff and tracking and, yeah. and working towards my goal. But yet in two weeks, I'm not going to see results. And it's like, no, 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 we are. I mean, if, if we are weight training and we are tightening up the diet, figuring out what you're consuming, I promise we're moving in the right direction. What I just don't want to see is this dramatic drop on the scale like you think you want to see. No, we need an accurate number. No, yeah, we want to. And absolutely, if you stay the same and you've weight trained for the for two weeks and you're starting to track your food, I promise yeah. we're moving in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Then you got a good starting point, right? right? All right, so step three is now that you have a accurate-ish uh, number that your, your body's burning on a regular basis, in other words, your maintenance – so we figured out how many calories you need to eat every single day to stay the same, okay? To stay the same body weight. Now we can adjust according to your goal. So now I can look at this and say, okay, um, you're, you're averaging 2,500 calories a day. We, ate, we didn't gain any or lose any weight. Um, looks like you were pretty accurate with your calories. I know you want to lose weight. Now I can drop you down to 2,000 to start the weight loss. Or... Okay, you want to gain muscle. You know, you were eating 2,000 calories a day. That keeps you the same. I can bump you up 500 calories. Or, which is more common, people want to lose weight. I look at their calories and go, they're too low to cut from. Yes. We're going to do a slow reverse that's diet. Almost, to build. That's yeah. almost every time. Right. So that's important to make this clear right it's now. It's like 80% of the time, I would there, say. Every once in a while, very rare, but every once in a while, you will get somebody who will track for two weeks. They'll come back. And this has happened to me, but it's one out of every... 25 or 50 it's very low we'll come back and be like well adam looks like i'm eating 5500 calories of <laughs> junk food i'm only moving 2000 steps and it's like oh cool oh, and for a trainer easy. by the way this is like heaven like yeah. getting somebody who is 
ate like shit, 5,000 plus calories. They're not moving whatsoever. It's like, oh my God, this is going to be such You're an like easy like climb. A couple small steps. <laughs> yeah, a couple small adjustments to diet. Like, yes, boom. let's skip the McDonald's. Let's have this instead. And then like, oh, we're going to start weight training. Oh, and start moving 4,000 steps a day. And this person is just going to have the right. They are rare that you get that. Most people have tried to diet and lose weight on their own so many times that their, sol- their metabolism has slowed and adapted to this, like what Sal was alluding to, this really low calorie intake. So even though you came in to see me and you go, Adam, I want to lose 50 pounds. We track and see where you're currently at. So let's just say you're, you know, let's say you weigh 250 pounds and you want to drop down to 200 and we track your calories and you're, you're averaging 2,100 calories and you're a male and you're 250 pounds. I'm not going to cut you from there. Even though your goal is to lose. Yes, I could drop you to 1500 calories, show you initial drop, but I'm going to convince you here that, okay, actually what our goal is going to be now is to slowly increase calories and do our best to keep the scale about the same. Kind of how we decided to start those first two weeks, we're going to extend that. But now I'm going to start introducing a little bit more calories based off of what I see now. And normally I have a direction that's either fiber or that's protein, right? Mm-hmm. There's different things that I can look at and go, okay, we're not getting our healthy fats. I'm not getting enough of that. So I'm going to bump you like with an avocado now into your diet. Yeah. Now, now without getting too much in the weeds, because this episode's more about how to figure out your calories, uh, usually what it looks like is, uh, okay, your calories are too low to cut from. Because remember, consider this, okay? You're losing weight. We're going to cut your calories to lose weight. We don't want to end up in a place that's not sustainable. Like I don't want you to end up at 1,000 calories a day to maintain your 30-pound weight loss. It's just not going to be sustainable. I know you'll gain the weight back eventually. You live in a country where food is all over the place and you know, nobody, nobody wants to live that way, right? So usually the calories are too low to start to cut from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly increase your calories. That's step one. Definitely do strength training because strength training sends a signal to the body. It says build muscle. Simultaneously, it says speed up the metabolism. So we're going to boost the metabolism that way. And Adam said your body weight doesn't change because what ends up happening when you do it the right way is your metabolism speeds up. You lose some fat. You gain some muscle. Weight stays at the same on the scale. Faster metabolism, but you're smaller overall because... Fat takes up more space. The third thing I usually do is I is I increase your, your protein intake. Most people are not eating the amount of protein that can maximize the results from protein. Protein is also very satiating. We've done lots of episodes on this. So that's the other thing that I'm typically looking at. Sometimes um, essential fats are not high enough. <laughs> and I've seen this more in my female clientele. Um, it seems like this is less and less of an issue. But you know, back when I was training people, fat was so demonized. That I'd get female clients be like, you ate 20 grams of protein, uh, excuse me, of fat uh, today. Like, we need to bump your essential fats up. You need, or your fatty acid intake up. You need more fat. So, usually those are the steps uh, that we'll take. And then once we get the calories to a point where I feel like we can cut from, then we'll start the cut. If you want to bulk, we typically just go from there and start your strength training. And then again, like Adam said, in the rare occasion that I get somebody who's overweight because they're eating so many calories, it's a real easy, you know, place to start from where I can do the cut. And I think so. I mean, I'd like to hear what you guys do. I have my way of like, how do I decide, you know, when I've been adding calories, how do I decide I want to come back the other direction? Yeah. Like, what's that number look like? Because obviously everybody's going to be different weights and, you know, uh, m- male, female activity levels. So there's all these different variables that would decide this person, oh, I start to cut at 2,500, this person at 3,500. Yeah. So how do I determine that? And what I'm looking for for a client is I I want to take a client and I want to slowly increase calories until the feedback I get is out it's of like a heart. chore. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I'm eating so uh, much food. Yeah. I, I want to take a client who needs to lose weight and I want to be able to to change their their diet and their macros and start feeding them the, the, the nutrient dense foods that they need and and focus on strength like Sal is saying and slowly keep increasing calories until the pushback I get is Adam, I'm having a hard time hitting my calorie intake. Yeah. That and that could be different for everybody. Maybe 3000 is a lot for you. Maybe I got you all the way up to 4000, 4500 before come down. It's going to be different for each client, but that's what I'm seeking. I'm looking to get you to a place yep. where it's like hard to get your calories in because then it's very yep. natural for you to go, "Okay, hey, don't worry about that fourth meal I had you eating. Just skip it." You now, know? this is a relatively slow process, and I say relatively because uh, in, the, in the context of how fast people want results, it's, yeah. it's slow. People want results tomorrow. But I'll, I mean, I'll, I remember one person in particular, young lady that I trained, she competed in figure competitions. She also ran a lot. So this, she was running about 25 miles a week, working out five days a week. 
trying she was competing in figure competitions when i when she came to me she was consuming uh roughly 1300 calories just to maintain we slowly got to the point where she was only lifting weights three days a week and only running five miles a week so so that's a huge reduction this is over a course of a year we did a reverse diet i got her up to 2600 calories and her body fat percentage maintained at a very low percentage so from 20, now, which one's easier to maintain, right? So that's why this is such an important thing. Don't think short-term, think, don't think how am I going to lose weight, think how am I going to keep it off. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the place that you want to be uh, when you're doing this. Right. All right, next step, don't radically change your activity yet. Let's mm. not, don't get to this point and be like, okay, cool, I know where I need to go. Five days a week of this, tons of activity. This is a lot harder no. uh, <laughs> than, than most people think. It's because of the motivation and the hype, you know, and it's, it's you're doing these things and you're starting to really kind of dial it in. The next thing you want to do is just go for it and go ham, uh, you know, with the activity uh, because uh, I mean, basically adding the kitchen sink, it just means like you're going to get to your goal faster. Yeah. Right? That's what everybody thinks. Everybody thinks think. more work, more effort, you know, more results. And it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I treat it the same way I did when I was competing as I do with my clients, which is all the, the, if you tell me as a client, like Adam, I could come in two more days a week and lift. I can, I got the time I'm committed I'll or Hey, I could go on my lunch break and I could yeah. go for an hour walk. And they, they're telling me they can do all these things or on the weekends. I could go for these big hikes. It's like, cool. We got all that. And that's great that you, we have those as a we'll possible. Get there. Yeah, we'll get there. And I want to use all those things for plateau breakers. I, if we are seeing results, by increasing calories and focusing on strength and and moving at the, your, your minimal amount, three days a week, you're training in the gym, that's it. And we are changing your body composition week over week. I don't want to fuck with that. I want to keep that going until we start to stall because it's inevitable. The body will adapt eventually to all those things and you will start to stall a little bit. And then now we can use all those those things to to kickstart the, the, the plateau. Here, let me use an plateau. analogy because I think some people watch and are like, but why? Like, wouldn't it just be better? And what if they really want to move more? And, okay, yeah. so here's an analogy. Imagine if um, I had uh, like 10 workers and I came out and I said, here's some plans. We're going to build a very sophisticated building. Here's step one. We're just going to build the foundation. And they do that really well. And then I say, okay, here's another 200 workers. I have no more plans. Keep building. And they're like, what do you mean keep building? Just keep, Just build. Just build. After a year of them building like crazy, I show up with the plans and say, it's all wrong. Tear it down. Let's, let's redo this. <laughs> That's what ends up happening. You throw a bunch of activity at yourself. Inevitably, what happens, you do something unsustainable. You push your metabolism in the wrong direction because the, the activity people tend to choose cardio is tons of cardio, which mm -hmm. can make your metabolism want to go in the opposite direction and prevent yeah. the muscle building signaling. And then you end up in a position where all the stuff we're talking about just went in the opposite direction. So you did all this activity to lose an extra 10 pounds. Now you're stuck and it's unsustainable. Why isn't my body working for me? I can't possibly work out more. I can't possibly cut my calories more. Oh, great. I give up. I gain all the weight back. So patience. Don't radically change or increase your activity. Here's the way that I, I think you can radically change your activity. Focus on building strength. That's positive. So if you're not doing strength training, we're going to do that. What we're referring to is you know kind of what we said earlier, which is, Cool. Now I'm ready to go. I went. I'm going to go from zero days of yeah. tons of activity to every day. It's really the calorie burn mindset. <clears throat> yes. Right? Yeah. Where you're just trying to do anything and everything you can to uh, promote movement and activity. Totally. And yeah. I'm not. I'm not against that. For when we get to the, the the final parts of your goal, to shred that last bit yeah. or to take you to a level you've never been. But you know, at the beginning, and I say this all the time on the show, is that you know our goal is to, and this goes for both building muscle. And for burning body fat, my goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change, and that should be the mindset when we're when we're doing this. That is not the mindset for health and becoming athletic and stuff like that. But when and when the when the pursuit is, I want to lose the most fat as possible. I want to build as much muscle as possible. If either one of those two is your main goal, then the mindset should be doing as little as possible to elicit and the most amount of change. It's not being lazy. No, it's not you a lazy. Know, it's it's systematic and disciplined. No. And it, that's the thing. It's You've got to look at the plan and stick with the plan. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you guys this. How important in terms of sustainable uh, progress results is how you start? Yep. Right? Yep. It's everything. How you start is everything in terms of sustainability. All right. So step five. Now this is when you start, you, you hone it in. And, and remember, I started the podcast by talking about how metabolism is changing. It flows. It can move up. It can move down. Whatever your number was that you started with was accurate for that period of time. 
It's not going to remain accurate. Your metabolism is going to speed up or maybe at some point it'll slow down because life gets stressful. You're maybe you're you're not eating as much, maybe you're not getting good sleep or you got sick and you know you couldn't work out or whatever. This is where you slowly hone it in. You pay attention to the signals because what you don't want to do and I've seen people do this before is they do the first four steps beautifully and then that's it. They stay there. Oh. Even though stuff is changing, even though the body's telling them that's not enough calories anymore or that's too much now, they stay to it. No, no, this is how many calories are burned. This is how many calories you burned, but now, you know, we got to pay attention. So what are those signals? Well, uh, body weight, body fat percentage, circumference measurements. Performance is my favorite goal. That's my favorite metric. If you're working out in the gym and your energy is dropping, your strength is going down, you're feeling sore, you're feeling stiff, that sometimes can tell you you're not feeding yourself properly. It could also tell you to adjust your workouts. Maybe you're you're working out uh, too hard. Um, your energy levels, like throughout the day, sleep, all these things. Pay attention to all these because then you can – and this is the beauty of, of fitness. It's a tool that improves the quality of, of your life regardless of the context of your life. But that means you have to change it. That means if I'm really stressed out, stuff's going on, and I, I can't beat myself up in the gym like I do when everything's going perfect. I can't feed myself the same when everything's perfect. So every single week, you pay attention to these things, and you move things up, you move things down. This is how you start to learn to read your body. And this actually will move you in the direction of never having to really go crazy with tracking again. Not that you'll never go back and revisit it, but you can move to a position where you just need to hone. You hone all the time, and you can maintain this, this kind well, of balance. Well, we, we listed this as the fifth step, but this really does belong at the beginning too. And the reason why this is so important to understand this, uh, even right out the gates is because you come in and you hire me and you want to lose 50 pounds on the scale. Uh, th that, I mean that you've, that's what drove you to come to me, right. And to invest into hiring a coach or a trainer. Uh, it's, it's really hard to stay the course if you don't learn to attach your success to all these other things in yeah. your life. Your, your energy, your sex drive, your hair, your skin, your mood, your productivity, like all the, your strength and performance. Yeah, pay attention. All you, that. It's so important to reframe your goal. You come in, you know the, the big goal is to lose that 50 pounds and we're going to get there. But right away... I want to already start being, I already want my client to start paying attention to those things so they can see those small wins because we may not get those big wins on the scale for a while. Mm -hmm. It may be months before I start to really show you that scale dropping in the direction that you came in originally. That's all you wanted. Mm -hmm. So this is so important that when you're at this place of, I have this big goal, I want to lose all this weight that, okay, that's fine. And that's the big goal. But initially, when we are trying to do this correctly, figure out your macros, figure out your calories, work with your metabolism, not against mm -hmm. it. We want to start to attach all the other things to it, right? The, like I just listed off, the the mood, the sex drive, the hair, yep. the performance. You ever watch um, on YouTube, they'll have these videos where someone's building something or sculpting or doing like a, like a piece of art. And for the first three quarters of the video, you can't even tell yeah, what right. it is. Until after about three quarters, you go, oh, wow, that's a that's going to be a gorgeous painting. Or, oh, my God. Yeah, or that guy that like paints upside down yeah, yeah. portraits and is just like throwing paint on there. And you're like, what is he doing? And then at the very end, the reveal is this amazing Well, it, it, what ha it's kind of what people do is they don't pay attention to the progress. Like you watch someone building something. On these, I watch people building things on these videos all the time. And I know what the title says, so I kind of know what to look for. But I can't even tell until about three quarters through. That doesn't mean they weren't moving towards that the right. whole time, yeah. even though I couldn't tell. So it's important to pay attention to all these other things. And by the way, that's what's going to drive you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Because those you're, things you're, you're going to be able to tweak and modify based off of your energy level, based off not getting enough sleep, based off of you know sex drive, whatever it is. Like you get a better understanding of your body and those uh, that that feedback, that signal, and you're listening to your body in terms of like how things are going. So you'll be able to adjust down the road. Yeah, and often those signals, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, predate weight gain or weight loss. So before the scale goes in the wrong direction you'll notice your performance change a little bit. You'll notice your sleep is a little off or whatever. So these are really, really good signals to kind of pay attention to. Well, anytime you're building anything of any significance, this is important. I mean, think about trying to build a business and if all we thought about was the dollar amount that we needed to make. Oh, like, yeah. How quickly after, do you give, yeah. yeah, you give up. 
Like we would get, How we would to invest just to make the next level. Yeah, we would. I would give. We would have given up on this business years ago if all we were measuring was the amount of money it's producing for us or making, which is similar to going in and saying, "Hey, I might have this big weight loss goal, and the only way I'm going to measure my success is the scale weight going up or down." It's like no, you know, wonder so many people quit. There's so many other aspects that are so important to laying a solid foundation that you have to learn to pay attention. To that just like in business, it's like, okay, yeah, we're not making any money yet, but we've now built this, and we've now created this, and we've now built this community and there's yeah. more people it's like you have to think the same way when you're going towards a massive goal yeah. when it comes to sculpting or building a body is like there are so many other markers that you can already be moving or moving in the right direction even though maybe the ultimate you know scale making money whatever isn't happening yet for yeah you. great analogy okay so let's say you're somebody that's like man when i pay that close attention to my food when i start to weigh things when i start to count things it messes with me mentally. Uh, it, it's not good for my behaviors around food, not good for my relationships around food. Or maybe you're just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to live that way. Is there another way uh, to do this? And there is. Now, I am going to be quite clear. If you want to get to your goal faster or you want to get shredded or you want extreme performance, what I'm about to say is not great. So what I'm about to say doesn't apply to somebody, to a guy who wants to get you know, below 10% yeah, body fat, right? <laughs> or a woman who wants to get some little bit of striations in her obliques or whatever. But what I am about to say will get most people to a pretty balanced state, meaning you're going to get relatively lean, <clears throat> relatively fit, relatively healthy, which is cool because most people, that's all they want. Most of the clients ever trained did not want to get 6% body fat, or at least they didn't want to live the lifestyle that required to get 6% oh, I'm gonna, fat. I want to make the case that you're going to get more than just relatively fit. I think the steps that you're about to give right now would get most people very healthy and fit. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's very healthy. I, mean. I say relatively because yeah. someone You're not going to get on the, stage. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to get shredded that way. No, but you're not, you're, you're going to have a flat midsection. Yeah. You're, you're going to have be mobile. Look mobile and feel fit. great, which is what most people want to do. And it's fair. Now, what you're about to list too, though, is it's inevitably going to take longer because you're it's you're not sure. being very precise about We're it. We're also working on behaviors. That's there. right. And and I, I think this, even if you did the first five steps, this in combination with the first first five steps. Where you want to end up. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, yeah. so so what we want to do is we want to hone in, and this is true, on our body's natural ability to want to be healthy. Now that sounds crazy because we think, oh, our body's natural uh, tendencies to want to be obese and inactive and all that stuff. No, it's not. The problem is, is that we have we've we've modified our environments to the point where our bodies, our primitive bodies, don't match the environment, and we're paying the consequences. So, how do we get our bodies to want to be to 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 be able to read the signals properly to live in this modern life? so that it's healthy, not obese and unhealthy. Well, number one, and this is a big one, and I used to I used to love messing with my clients with this one um, because they would all lose weight. Usually I would see, no joke, 10 to 15 pound weight loss uh, for clients, sometimes as low as seven, but usually around 10 to 15 pounds just by doing this, avoid heavily processed foods. And yeah. I love doing it because I would always follow up by saying, but eat as much as you want. Yeah. And my clients would always trip out. What do you mean eat as much as you want? Well, don't eat like, try to avoid foods that come in boxes or wrappers or, you know, pre-prepared food. Just eat whole natural foods, eat until you're full and, uh, and that's it. We'll see what happens. And they would always lose weight and they would always think there was something magical about the food and somehow, my God, the chemicals and heavily processed foods. I didn't know they made me fat and what are they doing? <laughs> and no, this is what, it, this is really what it boils down to. It's quite simple. Heavily processed food are engineered. There's a lot of money that goes into the right combination of salty, sweet, fat, crunch, appearance, how it feels in your mouth feel. Like I can't even list all the things that they pay attention. And this has been over the decades. They've, they've really made this a ridiculous science to the point where you will overeat. Studies now show this very clearly. 600 calories of overeating on a regular yeah. basis happens from me eating heavily processed foods. Well, too, this this kind of behaviorally like forces people to slow down and to to address this. You're gonna have to make something out of this whole food. Like mm. you gotta actually do some work to cook it. <laughs> you gotta go grab like all the items and put them together. You actually know what is in there in terms of like I mean, uh, you have a better uh, sense of of the actual calories yeah. that you're gonna consume. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of other. 
factors that go into this, but it's, it's definitely one of those, like the quickness, like it's, it's easier to get the processed food. Cause it's like ready already uh, versus, you know, I have to actually plan this out. There's also a very important psychological game that Sal's playing too, is he's not telling the client that they, they have to eat this certain way or they can't have something that they I'm yes. not taking anything away necessarily. I'm You're saying punishing as much yourself. As you want. And right. that, that may be one of the most powerful things yeah. aside from that, the food's hyper palatable and it's processed and it, and it makes you want to eat more food. Just simply the, the, the psychology of, Oh wow. My coach is saying that I can, if I'm hungry to eat, to, I don't, I, I don't have to fight that. Yeah. I don't have to fight that. So food. any fruit, vegetables, just, meat, yeah, just eggs. make choices as yeah. whole food choices. It gives them this freedom and it doesn't make them feel like they're restricting, which is a very dangerous place for these type of people, right? We're talking to right now, people that have a tendency of binging. So giving them the freedom to eat when they want, so long as they choose from whole, whole natural foods really unlocks that. And I think that's one of the most powerful parts. So let, let me illustrate just how big of a deal these heavily processed foods are or how it affects us. Okay. Imagine if I took uh, all of the ingredients for a, let's say a small pizza. Okay. And I took them separately. You had your cup of flour, you had your water, you had your oil, you had your pepperonis, you had your tomato sauce all separately. And I said, eat all this right? Eat all of this in the next 30 minutes. Nobody would be able to eat just a cup of flour and it would be gross. But if I put them together and organize them into a small pizza, well, now it's hyper palatable and I can eat the hell out of it. Here's another example, right? A family size bag of, of potato chips is like five potatoes. I could eat a whole bag of potato chips, no problem. I could not, even if I tried to force myself to eat five plain potatoes with nothing on them, It'd be very hard, right? That's how powerful these foods are simply avoiding them. And they do really good studies on this. They'll literally take this. There's very few totally controlled nutrition studies. Most of them are based off surveys, which is why nutrition and diet advice is so wonky, but they've done really good control studies where they take groups of people and they put them in a lab. Literally scientists are watching everything. And they say you over here, this group over here, you have access to heavily processed food. And then you over here, you have access to whole natural foods. By the way, they control for macros in there. So very similar macro breakdown for people who are like, oh, one group is eating more protein or whatever. No, no, it's very similar. Then they watch them and say, eat as much as you want. They don't say anything else. Then they watch them and then they take those groups and they switch them. They switch rooms. Okay. It's, it's, you can't make a study better than this. Consistently 600 more calories a day from heavily processed foods. And you want to talk about, you know, what's contributed to the obesity epidemic. It's not carbs. It's not fats. If you look, the the instance of heavily processed foods in our diet, how much that goes up, our obesity goes up. So I think now it's something like 70-something percent or 80% of our diets are heavily processed. So that's just one step right there that tends to bring you a little bit more in balance. All right, the next step is to aim for a high-protein diet, okay? If you track anything, make a protein. So take your body weight and... Divide it by half or aim for your body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, try to eat 100 or 200 grams of protein. On the higher end, is probably better. And each meal, break that up and say, okay, every meal I need to have 40 grams of protein and eat that first. Yeah, that's I was going to add that. Yeah. That's, I think that's the next key to that is like first figure out how many grams of protein you eat, target that, make sure you eat that first. And if you're sticking to whole foods, i tell you what, sticking to whole foods and leading with a protein Your first, calories drop. It's hard. Dramatically. It's hard to overconsume with that. That's it, And that's the key. A lot of people don't realize that. It's hard to overeat when you yeah. do those two things yes. right there. So. It's, 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 you know, it, it took me a long time to figure this one out that how, even as, as a coach and trainer, understanding all this stuff like that, like just my own behaviors, around like because the way we are served like what at any restaurant you go to a carb comes out bread first. or chips yeah bread and chips and breadsticks and dips and like that's what you get at uh, at almost every restaurant and then by the time you get your nice steak that you ordered 30 minutes later you've munched on everything else and then you also have the temptation of the mashed potatoes and gravy or whatever yeah. else is on the plate and so a lot of times i, I would watch myself leave some of the protein on there because I got so full eating other stuff or stuff myself on the meat because I feel guilty because I'm like, yeah. God, I have this expensive steak that I ate and I'm full right now, but I don't want to leave any of that. So then you- But even then you would eat less if you ate the steak first. Yeah, if I would have just ate the steak first. Even naturally. That's, and that, and again, playing with the psychology again, 
telling clients, no, you, it's not that you can't have these carbs or that, you know, just eat that first. And then afterwards indulge in that. And what ends up happening is you just, you eat yeah. less naturally. More uh, higher protein diet contributes to more muscle growth, which contributes to faster metabolism. It also produces the most satiety. Um, so just eat your protein first and try and eat high protein. And it's essential. The next one is to drink a lot of water, half a gallon to a gallon a day. Now, is this because water has this, you know, incredible ability to melt fat off your body? No, it doesn't do that. It doesn't wash, doesn't flush fat out of your body. I've seen people actually say that. Drink a lot of water, flushes fat out of your body. It doesn't work that way. What it does do though, is it makes you not drink anything else. Um, and it keeps you hydrated, which also helps with appetite. And that's it. Those two things right there make a really big difference. Like if you aim for that water intake, you're far less likely to consume calories from other fluids and you're far, and, and it actually reduces cravings. Sometimes cravings occur because you need water. They've actually yeah, shown it's that interesting. studies. I mean, energy levels was a big one for me. I noticed when I was properly hydrated, I was just more active just as a result of, of feeling energetic because I, I was fueling my body with the proper hydration I needed. Yeah. Again, you're playing the psychology game. Totally. Too, right. These I'm are all not, behavior. I'm, right? I'm not telling my, and you know, this is an, uh, I can't stand when there's fitness professionals that like to, take a, something like this, like the drinking a gallon of water thing, debunk it, shit on it. Oh, it's, we, we don't, don't need, need that much water. We don't need that show. much water. The reason why this thing is so valuable is that if you give a client a goal like that, if someone's never drank a gallon in a day and you or a half gallon a day even, and you give them a half gallon goal, well, they ultimately always come back like, wow, that is so much water. Yeah. I don't know. It's have a heart all day long. I'm work. I'm trying to get to that gallon. They're so focused on drinking enough water in the day. They're not, their mouth isn't busy snacking on bullshit or drinking liquid calories. Yep. So that's the, that's one of the most beneficial parts about this. Yes. Water is important. Yes. We need water, but there isn't this like arbitrary number that everybody needs exactly this much. No, it's just like when I give a client a goal of a half gallon or a gallon, what I have found is they're so focused on taking in versus saying that I can't have these other things. And I think that's an, another great strategy when you're doing totally. this. Totally. Uh, here's the next one. Um, don't eat while distracted. In other words, don't be on your phone while you eat. Don't watch TV while you eat. Just eat. Just focus on your food. Now, why why say this? Studies are consistent. They show about 10% 10, 10 less calories are consumed. Literally, because you're distracting yourself with your phone, first off, A, you could be get uh, you know invoking anxiety or fear or sadness or whatever from being on social media, which they do very well. Uh, they, they do invoke those feelings very well, which tends to make people want more comfort from food. But even if we remove that, being distracted means you're not as in tune with the signals that your body's telling you. And so studies will show when people eat with their phone or in front of the TV, they eat about 10, 15% more calories. So, simple, so if you eat 2,000 calories a day, not eating distracted will cut your calories on average by about 200 without even trying. That's the beauty of this. It's not even something you have to count. And again, speaking of the behavior, I'm not telling you to eat less. I'm just saying don't eat while you're distracted. Yeah. And then let's watch uh, what happens. Here's another one. This one actually I posted on Twitter and people didn't understand. They thought it was some you know magic digestive thing. Don't drink fluids while you eat. It has <laughs> nothing to do with the combination of fluids <laughs> and food and digestive <laughs> enzymes and all that stuff. It has nothing to do with that. It just slows you down. Yeah. When you when you drink while you eat, you tend to eat faster, which means you tend to eat more, which you can't read. The, your body doesn't pick up the signals of satiety as quickly. This was a huge one for me. You can huge. get you, you can get away with bigger bites, like bigger quantities at once because you can wash it down. And that's something I had to like train myself to, to be able to eat it and slow my pace down and actually get all the chewing in, which helps with the digestive process as well. So there's lots of like benefits to that. Uh, and it just seems like common sense. But for the most part, uh, if anybody's like me, which I think a lot of people are out there, like you end up like finding yourself just, just consuming and washing down to get it in. Yeah. People, studies show that when people eat things that are really palatable or tasty, and they have fluid with them, they'll they'll eat the food, I think, 20% faster. So think about this for yourself if you're watching or listening to this. Think about when you eat something that's like really palatable, like you know, pizza or lasagna or something that you really, really like and it's like really fun to eat. Think of how you eat that. You probably have a drink in your hand and you're probably bite, chew, 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 wash it down with a soda or something like that. But, and it's because it's just part of the behavior. When something's hyper palatable, you want, you're not even thinking about the food that's in your mouth. It's about it's the next, the next bite. 
and the fluid allows you to do this faster. Take that away and just say, okay, I can't drink any fluids. You're going to chew and slow down way more. And slowing down, again, cuts calories by like 10%. Just doing that alone cuts your calories by this 10%. This was another one that blew my mind because I didn't do this until later in my career just, to, just as a test because I didn't realize how much. And I think some of that comes from, and you're probably the same, Sal, when being the skinny kid who was trying to bulk, like I had trained myself so well to like shovel food yeah, totally. because I couldn't get enough calories totally. in to, to build like I wanted to when I was younger that I didn't realize how much that behavior had stuck with me all the way into later in adulthood. And I remember the first time that I tried to eat a meal without any fluid, how, how weird I felt because I didn't realize, man, I literally have my left hand on the drink. Yep you know, subconsciously, not even really thinking about it. And the right hand is like shoveling food in. You take one or two bites to absorb the taste. I'm already shoveling the next. I'm washing down. And then it's like, whoa. When yeah. you, and when you don't have that drink there and you have to like completely chew your food, it really makes you aware of like, I had no idea how bad it was that I was doing this that. This was the worst for me when I was, you know, always like, like same thing, always trying to put on size, you know, skinny kid. And then I was a trainer and I would train eight people in a day. Plus I was trying to eat six meals in a day. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I had seven minutes between clients to eat this meal. It's going to wolf it down. I would stand, I'd have my water, I'd have my food. And it was like, just like that. It was like, I was taking supplements. I'll choo choo, swallow, choo choo, swallow. And I went nuts. And now for me, I did, I developed digestive issues. This was a big, big deal for me. And when I took out the fluid while I was chewing, uh, I, it made me chew my food more, but nonetheless, again, studies show that this slows people down and results in about 10% uh, reduction in calories. Finally, just eat mindfully. What does that mean? Uh, just take note of how you feel, how you feel before, how you feel during, and how you feel after. That's all. You don't have to do anything else. Now, what does this lead to? Eventually, what it leads to is connecting mm -hmm. your feelings to cravings, okay? Your feelings to how you may self-medicate with food. Now, the only reason why this one's hard for some people is some people don't realize this, but when you try this, you might start to realize this. They don't want to be mindful. Mm -hmm. If it's your drug, which it is for most people, so don't feel bad if this is you. If food is a way that you medicate, one of the last things that you may want to do is be mindful of that fact that you're, medic med you're medicating. You know, so and I'll give you an example. It's lunchtime um, and normally I eat distracted. Or whatever. Okay, Sal said on the podcast, be mindful. So how do I feel right now? Well, I feel anxious. And then you're in line to get yourself a slice of pizza and a cookie. And they go, oh, I'm getting a slice of pizza and a cookie and I'm anxious. Is, it, is this how I, do I crave these f foods when I'm anxious? So there's some work that's done with this mindful practice. But if you do this and don't judge yourself, if you do this, what will happen is you'll start to make more mindful choices. And slowly over time, you start to make choices that are better for you overall. Um, so that's basically what it means. You don't have to go crazy with it. All you got to do is be mindful. Don't judge yourself. And that tends to move you in the right direction. Well, if you also follow the steps before of eating whole foods and slower and not, you start to pick up on the body's natural signals of totally. telling you it's full that you've completely, you know, suppressed for so long. Like so many people shovel food so fast or eating these hyper palatable foods that they're so out of tune that you have these natural signals that say, Hey, you're good. Yeah, And so by being mindful, slowing down, doing all the th steps that we said before, you'll be surprised how many times you, you're eating and you go, and you might have this big plate in front of you and you're, you're done. You're, you go like, oh, wow, I'm pretty full. Whereas in the past, you would have just kept shoveling or you would have ate something that would have hijacked that, that feeling and you would have kept going anyway. So being mindful and aware of when your body starts to give you that natural signal of, oh, I've had enough to stop. I've you know, had enough. You know, there's a saying, and I think it's in Japanese. Maybe Doug could could help me here. But I, I, I think there's a saying in Japanese that says, eat until you're 80% full. Is that? There is something. Let me see what that is exactly. Yeah, but I think that, and I love that. I love that because we have connected eat, eating until you're full to eating until you're stuffed, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm full. Like you're filling up a, like, a, like a tank of water. I'm like, oh, that's about it. We can't fit anymore. Yeah. I love that until saying. Until you're in agony. Right? I love that saying. It's like eat until you're 80% full because then you eat more appropriately versus the like, oh, I think I can't, I can't fit any more food in my yeah. mouth. Did you find it? Yeah. Hara hachibu. Okay. Is that literally what it means? Yeah. 80%. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Look, with that, if you love our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. 
You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.